And welcome to this, the opening of the Barbados Turf Club's second season of racing for 1986. We've brought an excellent day's racing lineup for you this afternoon. The feature race, of course, is the Barbados Fire and General Insurance Trophy, over seven and a half belongs for the A-class horses. We've got a field of six, but there are six good horses, and you can expect a really exciting event in that one. In addition, you've got the two-year-olds racing for the first time, a big field of 16, and there's always interest when the two-year-olds come out, and this afternoon will be no exception. We're seeing some very useful youngsters in action, and at the end of it all, I hope we'll be able to pick out a couple of future champions. In addition, we're seeing the Derby hopefuls in action for the first time in the season, and uh, most of them hoping to get a race in before the big race on the second day of the season. But to start the afternoon, let's take on the two-year-olds going five belongs in 20 yards. In a moment, these youngsters should be on their way. Standing very quietly on the inside is Son of a Dove. Next to him, the skipper. And they're off and running. There was no red light this time, but Son of a Dove came out flying. Um, Born and Native missed the break completely. But as they go racing up towards the four for long pole, it's Son of a Dove and Don Juan disputing it towards the outside. Liquid Bliss going up quite smoothly. Behind these and traveling smoothly on the inside is the skipper. And up towards the three for long pole. And still out in front, it is Heart's Delight. No, Happy Chimes picking it up on the outside. Happy Chimes in front on the inside. Don Juan going quite well. Liquid Bliss making up rapid ground. The skipper flying towards the outside. Also making some ground from the rear is Stephen Brown. Back to the two for long pole, and it is Don Juan in front. Happy Chimes losing her place. Uh, Liquid Bliss going terribly wide. Tucking in on the inside is the skipper. Also with a run from the rear comes Son of a Dove. And also making some ground is Heart's Delight. Inside of the home stretch they're coming. On the inside is Son of a Dove. It's uh, Don Juan challenging strongly on the outside is Liquid Bliss. And it's between the two um, Bill Marshall horses. Son of a Dove running on strongly. Liquid Bliss trying desperately. There's a two horse race. Son of a Dove and Liquid Bliss. 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 Just Son of a Dove might not have been second, that is about four or five minutes before we come to the skipper. Don Quixote ran a good one, Eriska, and the last one just going past us, horse number six. And horse number six, of course, is River Native. In a moment, we'll have the official result. 120 pounds and ring by Harry Springer, horse number 11, Liquid Bliss the winner. Second horse number eight, that's Don Juan, who ran a corker, ridden by Wendell Barrett, 120 pounds. This one is owned by Mr. C.O. Williams and uh, trained by Bill Marshall, as I told you before. Third horse number two, the skipper, ran a good race always there or thereabouts, ridden by Eric Clark and took along 113 pounds. And fourth, horse number nine, horse number nine, Don Quixote, ridden by Slade Callahan and took along 113 pounds. This one owned in Trinidad by Mr. Liz Lindsay Gay and trained by Challenger Jones. Sorry, Kelly, and they're off and running. And let's see who will be the first to show. The great Peter Admiral coming across from the outside. Peter Wick was also off nicely up on the inside and going up to join the early leaders. It's I Will Roll along the outside of I Will Roll is the Eye of Tola. Then comes Tia Red tucking on the inside towards the outside. Lady Dale creeping up. Uh, Chief Justice with a jockey standing tall in the south of the back marker, but not far off at all is Abdul. Seven for long to run, and it's the great Fleet Admiral settling down in front up on the inside. I Will Roll easing up. Then comes Old do something on the outside. Tucked in between horses comes Peter Wake on a handy hole. Up on the inside is Timberway, then the Ayatollah tracking. Lady Dale tucked in. Chief Justice is going right up on the inside to join the leaders. Uh, Abdul is the lap back marker with Bull Rebels just ahead of him. Five and a half belongs to go on his fleet admiral, stretching out in front by two from Do Something. Up on the inside with the jockey standing tall in the saddle as I will rule. Peter Wick is there or thereabouts. Then comes the Ember Raid going up to join the leaders. The Ayatollah racing up on the outside and Chief Justice going up very comfortably on the inside. Four belongs to go and it's still fleet admiral in front. He's still in front by two lengths with Neil Brewster in the saddle. Apprentice Neil Brewster and fleet admiral the leader. Um, going up on the outside now to join him. It's Peter Wick. Behind Peter Wick is the Ayatollah. Tola going nicely, uh, losing his chances, TM Raid, and the others seem to be out of it at the moment. As they come back to the drill hall, it is Peter Wick who strikes the front from Fleet Admiral towards the outside and going beautifully is the eye of Tola. And behind him comes Lady Dale moving smoothly, Chief Justice circling the field. Fleet Admiral is beaten at this stage. Back to the home turn as the eye of Tola coming out on the outside to challenge Peter Wick. On the inside, Lady Dale gets a beautiful break and she comes through to join the leaders. And so the eye of Tola on the middle of the track. Lady Dale on the 
inside, beat away, falls away, beaten, four rebels coming up the challenge. What is it, the two horse race in front? The Ayatollah and Lady Dale. The Ayatollah and Lady Dale. Lady Dale and I, the Ayatollah. Lady Dale just getting her neck in front to win it from the Ayatollah. In third spot is Chief Justice. Peter Wake is fourth. Bull Rebel is there, thereabouts. Then there's um, Chamber Raid, Fleet Admiral. Do something, and the last one just going past us, Abdul. In a moment, we'll have the official result. Lady Dale being led in by trainer Eustace Jordan. And uh, Mr. Jason Payne, who bred this mare at Harrow in St. Philip. Congratulations to all the connections. The lights flashing in there, off and run a little bit of banging and bumping as they come out of the gate for the first time. And Happy Go Lucky kicks clear. She is the early leader from Fungalore. Coming across from the outside with the yellow bandages is Golden Berry. And towards the outside as well as the K going up to join the early leaders. Past the post for the first time. And it's Happy Go Lucky and Golden Berry. Fungalore tucking on the inside. Tyra being taken a little bit wide. Also Decade being taken terribly wide. And he might have lost his chance there. Sneaking up on the inside is Cutters. Tyra goes up as well. Then there's Little Chick towards the inside. Golden Opportunity Spotlight. A long way back to Tip. Boy in world recession, no way in it at the moment. Four and a half belongs to go, and it's still a happy go lucky in front. She's the leader from on the outside, Golden Berry. Uh, moving up nicely on the inside is Cutters. Also, there's Rich Giff and Decade beginning to make up some of the lost ground as he goes up towards the outside. Three and a half belongs to go, and it's still a happy go lucky, but she gives way as Golden Berry sweeps by on the outside and she picks it up. And I better watch that one towards the outside and going quite nice. This Rich Giff going well. Tyra coming to challenge. Fungal also with a run. Cutters losing ground, Decade beginning to make some headway and he seems to be out of it at this moment. Back to the two for long pole and Rich Gift kicks clear by three lengths. Golden Berry is still there, Fungalore towards the outside, coming with a challenge. Spotlight with a big white blaze also making a run. Decade going right around the field. Cutters there with a chance as well as they come into the home stretch. It is Rich Gift still the leader, Fungalore coming out the challenge strongly. Golden Berry is still there, golden opportunity wide under the hedge. No chance with that one, but it is Rich Gift. He has it by three or four lengths from Fungalore. Spotlight challenging strongly on the outside for a small end of the first, but it's Rich Gift home comfortably from Fungalore, then the spotlight, Tyra, Lil Chick, Golden Opportunity, Golden Berry, Decade, Happy Go Lucky, the early pacemaker, then uh, Tips Boy, Cutters, and the last one just going past, World Recession. In a moment, we'll have the official result. Rich Gift being led in by the Bino Connection, that's Mary Bino, and her son, the winning jockey, of course, is Space Callahan. Light flashing and the box is open and they're on their way. Pretty level break, High Fandango was a little bit slowly out, Diala came out quite quickly, but coming across from the outside to join the early leaders is the great Jean's Choice. With just over seven for long to go, it's Diala and Jean's Choice disputed. On the inside, Freshwater tucked in, the Knights being hard held in full, in fifth is Cavern, going up on the outside, just running along with Super Something. Between horses comes discreetly, yours, High Fandango, and Sullivan then is the last one. Around the paddock, Ben they go, and it's in front, Jean's Choice from, this, from Diala. On the, out, on the outside, tracking nicely, is Manites, Freshwater being ridden along, Cavern with Richard standing tall in the saddle, discreetly yours is there, Super Something, on the inside, um, High Fandango just going up, and Son of a Gun starting to make his run from the rear. Just over four furlongs to go, and it's still the great Jean's Choice, in front, by a length, from, on the inside, Diala, Manites making a challenge and going right up to join the leader. It's the grey, uh, Jean's Choice still in front, and Manites sweeping by on the outside to pick it up. It's Manites in front by a length, and that widens to two lengths, to three lengths, to four lengths. Manites in front from Jean's Choice, Cavern making rapid ground from the rear. Diala also making ground from the rear. Towards the outside, Freshwater going up to join them, and circling the field, it is discreetly yours. Back to the mile pole, and it is Manites who is kicked clear by three. Jean's Choice running on steadily in the second position. Cavern coming to challenge, discreetly yours right on the outside. Also so there were the chances, super something, fresh water through the middle as he gets a let in. Inside the final for long and a half, and it's still Manites and Jean's Choice coming up to challenge. Cabrera is there as well in fresh water. It is Manites and, and Jean's Choice. Manites and Jean's Choice. Jean's Choice and Manites. Jean's Choice and Manites. Jean's Choice wins it by a head from Manites. In third spot is fresh water. Then there's Cabrera, just quickly or Diana, super something, a son of a gun, and high fandango. In a moment, we'll have the official result. The winner. Being led in by Peter Lashley, another companion, and the court is still very much full of running. Wants to run away <laughs> with these two gentlemen as they attempt to lead him in. They're all in for this five and a half for long D-class sprint high girl making her return to racing. And this is her prep for United Barbados Derby coming up in two weeks' time. She looked very well going up to the start. 
And we'll see in a matter of seconds how well she goes. They are off and running the high girl came up with her running shoes on. Towards the outside, Sholo going up to join her. Street King also came up quite nicely and Bright going by on the outside. It looks like Royal Pleasure. Four and a half belongs to go and it's Royal Pleasure, Country uh, High Girl and the Sparkling Brook up there as well disputing it. And the tour just tucked in behind his happy hooker. Uh, Cousteau showing speed as he goes up towards the leaders. But as they go up the hill towards the three for long poles, Royal Pleasure's gone clear by a length fourth so from High Girl. Call Girl is there in third spot. Cousteau moving sweetly in fourth position. Towards the outside, Sparkling Brook making ground. Sholo is there. Happy Hooker is beating up this stage and the back marker is it, so why not? Back to the two for long pole and his Royal Pleasure and High Girl challenging strongly on the outside. Tucking on the inside is Call Girl and she has good acceleration so she'll be in it in the end. Then Sparkling Brook, Happy Hooker circling the field. Cousteau coming out with a challenge. Inside the last for long and a half and it is High Girl who hits the front. She's gone clear by a length. Challenging Strongly is Call Girl running on very strongly. Royal Pledge is beaten in third spot. But it is High Girl, and here comes Call Girl with a tremendous run. I don't think she'll get there in time. High Girl wins it quite comfortably by a length from Call Girl. Then there's Royal Pleasure, Cousteau, uh, Sparkling Brook, Happy Hooker. If so, why not Sholo, Super Something, and the last one is Street King. In a moment, we'll have the official result. Here comes the winner. High Girl being led in by Ola Frida Patterson. And that's Mrs. June and Hudson. Her husband, Mr. Johnny Hudson, Brenda Spilly at the Mountain St. George. Number two is the Grey Master Driver, 113 pounds, ridden by Ricky Griffith. This five-year-old bay horse has not been seen since the A-Class race early in the year. That was on the 25th of January. Looks extremely well and has been going guns at exercise. And we can expect this one to go very well in this Barbados Fire and General Insurance Trophy. Number three, Astral King, written by the apprentice Slade Callahan, taking along 106 pounds. This five-year-old chestnut was a win in his last start over seven and a half longs, and he must be considered in this event today. Number four, Green Man, the local bred colt, looks extremely well. This one is written by Venice Richards, and he is tackling the top class for the first time. He's done extremely well against the C-class horses, Today, tackling the A-class horses and feeling very full of himself, this big colt by Green Ginger of Tricell, Green Man, which is riding 113 pounds. Number five, the Martinican bred P.U., now five years old, owned by Miss Claudette Joseph, ridden by the apprentice Charlie Brown, and he takes 121 pounds. This is an extremely good horse. He has won over seven and a half for long before. Tremendous early speed, and he is expected to dictate the early pace in this one. In spite of the fact that he's packing a big weight, we can expect Pew to give up his best. Number six, merely a secret. Six-year-old chestnut horse by secretary out of Lady Mirror. This one is ridden by Elton Shorey and takes along 115 pounds. Looks well today. He's had a season at stud, and I believe that he might like the little gift that is on the foot today. Number seven, Somersault, probably one of the most consistent horses in training today. In the absence of Bentham, this one has been installed favorite, and he certainly looks the part today. Has been going guns at gallops, and uh, this is the one all the race fans are expecting to take this Barbados Fire and General Insurance Trophy over seven and a half furlongs for the A class horses. Somersault is being ridden by Harry Springer and takes along 118 pounds. We should shortly be on our way for this feature race of the day, the Barbados Fire and General Insurance Trophy. Light flashing and they're off and running. Master driver came out quite quickly, so to Astral King and his stable companion PU towards the outside. Seven for longs to run, and it's Astral King and PU together. Tucking on the inside is Green Man, then comes merely a secret. Master driver going up, and the last one is Somersault. Around the paddock, Brennan, they're going a mighty fast gallop. Astral King setting out in front by a line from PU, tuck it in behind him. Five or six lengths before we come to Green Man. Another two lengths to Merely a Secret. Four lengths to Master Driver. And Somersault badly outpaced at the back of the field. Five to go, and it's still Astral King in front by two. From PU cruising in second spot. Three lengths back to Green Man moving up. Another five lengths to Merely a Secret. Master Driver beginning to make some headway. And Somersault seems to be struggling at the back of the field at this, at this time. Just over three and a half for longs to go. And it's still Astral King in front by two. From PU. Behind PU and moving sweet. It's Green Man, three lengths back to Master Driver, making a run from the rear. Then there's merely a secret and somersault now beginning to motor as they go towards the two for long pole. Astral King has gone clear by three and they better go after that one. Master, um, Pew in second spot, Green Man going nicely in third. Master Driver beginning to make some ground from the rear. Here comes Somersault with a late run, it might get a little too late. 
the last one at this stage is merely a secret. Into the home stretch they come. And it is still Astro King. P.U. coming up the challenge. The Grey Master Driver switching towards the outside. P.U. is beaten. Green Lion coming up the challenge. But it is Astro King. And here comes Green Lion with the right on the outside. Master Driver there as well. They're not going to catch Astro King. Master Day, he's in front. is going nicely. Astro King is going to win it. Visit now from Green Lion. Master Driver is third. Five lengths back to P.U. Another six to Somersault. And another seven to Merely a secret. In a moment, we'll have the official results. Here comes the winner, Astro King, being led in by Safi Joseph and his sister, Claudette Joseph, as they go away towards the stand. The winning jockey, of course, is Slade Callahan. Light flashing, and then we'll see the speedsters go away. There they go, Island Ruler got a flyer, she's up quickly. Romeo also quite quickly, high runner losing speed. Uh, Cat Below going up on the outside, Southern Dance is well away, and uh, Soto showing some speed on the outside is Irish Miss. With four pullouts to go, it is Romeo on the inside. Romeo on the inside and towards the outside, showing a lot of speed. It looks like Cat Malou. Cat Malou is the leader from Romeo, length or so, before we come to... Which one is that? It looks like Cool Breeze, is it? Yes, it is Cool Breeze. Moving up on the inside, Sweet Days Island, Hula who lost her place. Southern Dancer there with a chance. Another dub with a chance as well. A long way back before we come to Light Opera, who's circling the field. As they come with just over four and a half to go, it is still Cat Below in front. Cool Breeze challenging strongly on the outside. Mayor Smith there with a chance. And on the inside, Romeo going extremely well. Restoration with a chance. And Southern Dancer coming out to pick it up. It is Southern Dancer in front. And challenging strongly is Restoration from the rear. She's going better than anything else. But it is Southern Dancer and Restoration. And here comes another double on the outside, but no, Southern Dancer visit from Restoration, Island Rule is third, another Delve is fourth, then there's Cool Breeze, uh, Star for four, and the last one just going past us, Link Field, at the moment we'll have the official result. Here comes the winner, Southern Dancer, being led by Levitt Morris, and a very elated trainer, Jeff Brown, Jeff has been landing some long shots, remember he trained it, so why not, last season, who won, uh, scored a big upset here, so, light flashing, there they go, they're off and running. Jenny Scott a little bit slowly out, so do it. Okay, Joe, Navarra Cup, Secondo came out flying. Five for long to go, and Jenny Scott goes by on the outside, and she picks it up. She's coming right across. She's gone three lengths clear of Carey, who's up in second spot. Third on the red is Navarra Secondo. Then comes Bali on a happy style, well in touch. And four lengths back to OK Joe, the grey horse. Up to the three for long pole, and it's Jenny Scott. She's gone clear by four. Carey tracking in second spot. Towards the outside, and moving up nicely is Bali on her. On the inside, Navarra Secondo also traveling smoothly. Happy style comes next, and four lengths back to OK Joe. Back to the drill hall, just over two to go, and it's Jenny's Castle by five. She's comfortably in front, carrying the gaze and showing towards the outside. Baliona there with a chance as well. Navarra Secundo still traveling smoothly on the inside. Happy style beginning to circle the field. Into the home stretch, and it's all Jenny's Castle. She's three lengths clear. And here comes Baliona with a challenge. Wouldn't get there in time. Navarra Secundo is there as well. Carry running around strongly, but it is Jenny's Castle. Here comes... Mariana with a tremendous challenge as Jenny's castle is stopping quickly, but she's going to get home. Visit now by a length from Mariana. In second, second spot is Navarra Secundo. Kari is third. Um, Bayona is third. Kari fourth. Then there's Happy Style. And the last one just going past us, OK Joe. In a moment, we'll have that result for you. First, number six, Jenny's Castle. Second, number five, Baliana. Third, number two, Navarra Secundo. And fourth, number three, Kari. Here comes the winner, Jenny's Castle, being led in by the Sinclairs, that's Margaret and Sophie Sinclair, and the other young Sinclair helping to lead in that winner. I'm sure you will agree with me, it has an exciting day's racing. At the start, we thought it was firm going, but afterward, uh, we investigated and found out that sometime during the course of the night, someone had done an unofficial watering of the track, apparently somebody broke into the Turf Club's pump house, turned on the watering system, and eventually we ended up with good going. This apparently put play to the chances of a lot of the horses, which usually have come first on form going. In the feature race of the day, the Barbados Fire and General Insurance Trophy over seven and a half for longs. We saw a stunning performance from Astro King. Somersault failed to come on the soft ground. And uh, of course, 
that was a disappointment to his supporters. Master driver, he ran well for a long way, but I'm sure the run of the race came from the Creole Green Man, who put up another courageous performance to be second to Astro King of the A-Class race. As far as the Derby is concerned, the United Barbados Derby, my girl certainly put up a good performance, and she must be installed as one of the favorites for that big race come August 9th. And of course, we are all looking forward to that race. The kid was a little bit disappointing, unfortunately. He went by going around the paddock bend, but that gallop must have done him good. It was a little bit unfortunate we didn't see Paddy Bird in action, but I'm sure by Derby Day, that filly will be fit. On the second day of the season, we'll have the Derby, and of course, we'll be looking forward to seeing champion Benton back in action. He's back on the saddle, going well, and all in all, the second day's racing should be an exciting affair. On behalf of Cameraman Richard Barnett, this is Mike Goddard, wishing you all the best.